Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and receive from your word. We thank you, Father, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. We thank you that he is free to move in any way that he sees fit. We thank you that he will bring the word of God with clarity and accuracy to us tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, let's go to uh, 1 John. Actually, 3 John, I'm sorry. 3 John, verse uh, 2. And, uh, you know, it's funny. <laughs> you say something like that, 1 John, and your, your spirit goes, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's 3 John. <laughs> I, like, I like the fact he corrects me. Hallelujah. Uh, so let's go to 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Now, we've heard that scripture. We've gotten a lot of insight on that scripture. We've seen some things about it. <clears throat> but that word in the scripture, I wish, dilutes it a little bit. You know? Now, it's no problem with John, the beloved disciple, praying, and wishing something for you. But that's really not the best translation of this word. The Greek word here is eukomahi. Don't you love Greek words? <laughs> and it means several things. It does mean to wish, yes, but it also means to pray, and it means will. So I like to substitute the word will in there because that is a definition of that word. Beloved, I will, above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be of health even as thy soul prospers. Well, that puts a different light on it. It's no longer a wish like, yeah, well, you know, I wish you well. You know, that kind of thing. No, it's, it's his will. Now, taking this out of just John speaking to us, because this is the word of God, and we look at it as God speaking to his children, his beloved, it becomes even stronger because he says, beloved Christians, children, I will. So if there's any, ever any doubt concerning the will of God concerning healing, well, there's one of many scriptures that will answer that question. I will above all things. Now, I like the above all things. Because, you know, he could will a lot of things. He could will uh, a good and happy life. <laughs> and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, we know that God does desire for us to have a good and a happy life. That's all good. But above all things, I will that you prosper and be in health. Well, if you go a little deeper, you'll find out this word prosper, yoodo in the Greek, means to succeed to, uh, and, and implies to succeed in business affairs. In other words, it's actual prosperity in the natural. You know, there's a lot of people that would like to spiritualize this and say, well, you know, God wants us to prosper spiritually. Well, let me just put this before you. If we're born again, and we are, then our spirit has been born again. We're now alive unto God. How much more can you prosper spiritually? I think, you, I think you've prospered spiritually to the extreme already. You know what I'm saying? There's no need to just prosper just in the spiritual realm. Now, God wants you to grow. He wants you to, uh, to develop spiritually. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about as though there were this state that you could achieve based on spirituality. Well, you're born again. So he's not talking about that. He's talking about success in business affairs. Well, that kind of pulls it out of the spiritual, you know, ooey-gooey, spiritualized realm that a lot of people like to put it in and puts it down into here and now and says that you should prosper in business affairs. Now, I will say this. You know, there's a scripture that says, this is a scripture that a lot of people find very inconvenient. <laughs> you ever found any of those scriptures <laughs> that are just a little inconvenient? Well, this is one that's very inconvenient for a lot of folks, and that is, if you don't work, you won't eat. You know, there's a lot of people saying, oh, I'm going to prosper. Well, put your hand to something. 
Do something. And God will prosper you in that. See, it says to succeed in business affairs. If you're not involved in business affairs, kind of makes it hard to prosper. Okay, we kind of have always felt like in word of faith circles, which of course I came out of, charismatic word of faith, uh, we just had this idea that God was just going to zap it on us. And we were going to be so prosperous and rich, we are going to drive Rolls Royces and all this kind of stuff. That was our attitude back in the day. But as you study the Word of God, God is not about just blessing you financially so that people can point at you and say, whoa, he's prosperous. That's not the reason. The reason he prospers us is so that we can give into the kingdom, so we can support the Word of God, so we can send people into all the world. We have a mission. And so he's supplying the need of that mission. Now, he does it through us, and we get blessed by it, and he doesn't mind us having good things. But you know, it's funny. I don't think I'd really enjoy having a Rolls Royce. You know, they're big, and they're heavy, and they drink a lot of gas, and they're hard to keep up, and it costs a lot to maintain them. And You know, I've got that little old Kia out there, and it runs perfectly fine. Gets good gas mileage. If I need to get it fixed, it's fairly cheap to fix. I mean, it still gets me from point A to point B. From my perspective, I'm prospering in that I have a car that gets me from point A to point B. I don't need a whole lot else. That's just not, that's not me. You know, now, yeah, if I had some real super fancy car, I'd drive it. <laughs> but I'm not going to go seek after it. I don't have any desire to. You know, somebody gives me a BMW and it's all slick and shiny. Oh, yeah, I drive it. But that's not my real desire. Now, where you got to watch me is equipment, like video equipment and microphones. You can ask Belinda, how many microphones does this boy have? A lot. And a lot, a great number of them have not been used yet, <laughs> sadly. Some of them have been used a couple times and, I didn't quite like the sound, you know. So it, it's, but I have found one that I like. And Belinda reminds me every so often, it sounds really good. <laughs> it really sounds good. Yes, I know. <laughs> but that's just me. If I was going to go nuts, I tend to go nuts in that arena rather than cars. And planes, I just don't have a, a use for a plane. Just me. But I can prosper. In the natural, I got a nice computer here. Works great. Didn't even have to buy it. It was supplied to me by work. But you know what? I got eSword on it. I got all kinds of other good things. To me, that's prosperity. I'm blessed because I'm operating in those business affairs that we're talking about. And then being health. The word health here, oh boy, this Greek word. Wow. Hugeoaina. No. <laughs> I love Greek words. It means to have sound health physically and be well in body. I mean, can you get any more clear than that? To be well in body, to be uncorrupt. I like that. To be in health, to be safe, to be sound, to be whole. All of those are part of the definition. So God is saying, I will for you that you prosper in your business affairs, and that you be in health in your body, even as your soul, that's the Greek word suke, prospers. Now your suke is your mind, will, and emotions. So as we renew our mind to the word of God, then our mind, will, and emotions get renewed to the word, and that's how our soul, mind, will, and emotions, prospers. So if you've been wondering, well, you know, Prosperity and health, yeah, I'd like that. Well, you need to start operating on mind renewal. Start working toward renewing your mind more and more and more. And you'll find that it will parallel as your soul prospers. That's what he's saying here. Your physical health and your financial health will prosper as well. <coughs> I got a little tickle in my throat all of a sudden, so I'm glad I got the water. Let's go to Acts 10, 38. We're just looking at some scriptures involving healing tonight. Acts 10, 38, very familiar scripture. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now it's interesting, we'll just stop right there, do a little Selah moment here. The Holy Ghost and power. The Holy Ghost and power. Well, you know, but the Holy Ghost is the power of God. Yeah, well, okay. But the power he's talking about here is specific. He anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing. He went about doing good and healing. Now, it's interesting to me, doing good and healing has to mean the healing is good. Amen? Now, I know a lot of preachers. Well, I should say, I used to know a lot of preachers back in the day at the Southern Baptist Church that I came out of. They firmly believed that healing was of the devil and that God made people sick to teach them something. Now, that's completely squirrely from what John 10.10 says. Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So they got it completely reversed. From their perspective, God was making people sick, and the devil was healing people. He's just, devil's just showing off healing people. And it, you should go to those healing meetings because you might get a devil. You know, that's the kind of stuff I heard. And yet here it says, Jesus was adorned with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Well, if he did good and healed, then healing must be good. Now, I know this is simple stuff that we've heard before, but we, can, we need to renew our mind to this. Healing all. Now, notice he didn't heal some. <laughs> he healed all who were oppressed to the devil. So, did God make them sick? No, they were oppressed to the devil. See, again, clarity comes from looking at what the Scripture has to say. For God was with him. God was with Jesus. So, God was on Jesus' side. Wow, that's great revelation, Dr. <laughs> Bill. Yes, it is. Because God was for what Jesus was doing, doing good and healing. You know, there was never a point that Jesus went out to the crowds and they came up to him and said, Oh Lord, I've come to receive my healing. And he stuck his hand out and a great voice from heaven said, No, I have chosen that this one be made sick for my glory. Not one time in the scripture did that ever occur. There was never a time that Jesus put his hand out and said, I'm going to lay hands on you and give you cancer. It just never happened. Now, I said, you know, one time as I was studying some of these things, <coughs> I kind of saw in my mind's eye, you know, how sometimes you kind of picture things. And I pictured one of these dear old Baptist preachers that I used to know praying and saying, Lord, can't you, couldn't you have left one Scripture, one statement in the Word of God somewhere that said that Jesus laid hands on somebody that got sick. One place where you said, I want you sick. Because I'm having a hard time preaching this and I don't have any Scripture I can stand on. That ought to tell you something, preacher. <laughs> well, if you can't find one Scripture that says that, but you can find hundreds that says that Jesus went about doing good and healing and others like it, I think your theology may be a little messed up. We need to straighten you out just a bit. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at some of these scriptures just to get a different view. And toward that end, I want to read a scripture to you that had, you, you may not have ever heard used in the area of healing. You've probably heard it used in other areas. <laughs> but let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He's talking to uh, the Corinthians here, and he says in verse 12, All things are lawful to me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought into the power of any. Meats are for the belly, belly for meats. He's addressing <coughs> a lot of things that they were dealing with. And down in verse 15 he says, Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? 
Shall I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. Now, obviously, he's saying in the scripture that our physical bodies were not intended, are not designed to be used to commit sin. That is not God's intent at all. He wants us to live a sanctified, separated life unto God in our physical bodies. But here's the point that maybe you haven't seen. We know that as born-again believers, our spirit is born again. Amen? Remember, we are a spirit. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. We live in a physical body. So our spirit's born again. And if you were to say, I'm part of God the Father. God is a spirit. I'm part of God the Father uh, as a believer, so therefore I, I have a spiritual connection. That's true. But here it says something very unique. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ. Your body is a member of Christ. He says, shall I then take the members of Christ and make the members of a harlot? Well, obviously he's talking about a physical body because you can't do anything with a harlot with anything other than your body. Right? <laughs> so what are we saying here? Well, that means your body belongs to the Lord. Your body is part of the body of Christ. Now, so is your spirit. Yeah, okay, amen. But your body. Now, why even bring this up when talking about healing? Well, think about it. If you're part of the body of Christ, and it says here our bodies, physical bodies, obviously, are members of Christ, don't you think God wants his own body well? I mean, if, you, if you're God and you have a choice... I think you want your body well. You know, I've been sick, and I've been well, and well's better. <laughs> Amen? So God wants his body, us, well. Shouldn't come as any surprise. Now, we got all kinds of scriptures that show us that. We're going to look at a couple tonight. But I find it interesting that even this scripture that is not normally used in reference to healing can have a little insight. Our bodies are members of Christ. Well, is Jesus, where he is now in heaven, sick any longer? Now, he bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. He became sick for us. But all of that was dealt with. He is now well. He's now healed. So we get in on that health. Praise the Lord. So, I think, I think that's an interesting thought. I, that just... It struck me, something Keith Moore said along these lines, and it just struck me, I went, really? I hadn't thought of that. Let's look at uh, Isaiah 53. Very familiar scripture that we've seen so many times. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, and let's go to verse... Uh, well, let's go down to verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now going back to that dear Baptist preacher, brother, <laughs> he would look at this and say, see there, see there, it says griefs and sorrows. You know, yeah, he bore our griefs, he bore our sorrows, but you, you keep talking about sickness and disease. He's not talking about sickness and disease, he's talking about grief and sorrow. Well, yeah, but it does say by his stripes we are healed. Well, yeah, but you know, that could be spiritual healing. All right, well, let's look at what the scripture has to say. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 8. You know, it seems to me that Jesus commenting on the scripture is a good authority. You know, I'm all for the theologians that write books and so forth. You know, they explain some things that are great. Sometimes they get a little off, and I don't <laughs> pay attention to that. But most of the time, you know, they got some interesting insights from the Hebrew and the Greek and so forth. But Jesus, I think, is a higher authority. Matthew eight seventeen. well, let's back up verse 16. When the evil was come, they brought him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. All. I like that word, all. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities 
and bear our sicknesses. Now, over in Isaiah, we read griefs and sorrows. Well, it's because the Greek word, or the, excuse me, the Hebrew word there, translated grief and sorrow, is correctly translated grief and sorrow, but it also means sickness and disease. Now, if you've been sick, there's grief involved. <laughs> if you've been sick, there's sorrow involved. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, we just left the woods a few days ago, and, and uh, the baby, Jamie, was, was sick, and he was throwing up. All of them got whatever he had, and they're dealing with that right now. And I saw some posts by Bonnie on Facebook, and you could tell she was hanging in there, but her spirits were a little low. Uh, we're having a hard time right now. Well, yeah. There's some grief and sorrow involved in being sick. Now, of course, praise the Lord, they're healed whole. By Jesus' stripes, they're healed. I'm believing for them. But I'm just saying, you know, you look at that household, they're kind of they're sad right now because of their situation. That comes with sickness and disease. Nothing good ever came from sickness and disease. Really. A lot of people say, yeah, you know, God made so-and-so sick to teach them something. Well, you know, looks like there's other ways God could have taught him. <laughs> you know, he, he did that for his glory. Looks like there's better ways he could have received glory. Matter of fact, I don't see how God gets any glory out of sickness. I just don't. You know, he didn't give it to him because Scripture is very plain on that. Uh, when the person's sick, they really aren't able to go out and witness and do things for God. Kind of sidelines them. So... <laughs> I don't see how it brings God any glory. I think that uh, religious folks made that up for other reasons. And one of the reasons that uh, I think they made it up for, it's just me now, I don't have scripture and verse for this, it's just me. I think a lot of them made that up so that they wouldn't be responsible to believe God and get healed. You know, they just let it go, whatever happens, happens. Que sera, sera kind of theology. And if they happen to get sick, well, that was God. If they happen to get well, well, that was God. You know, and it's just easy on them to do that. Yeah, there's times when you've got to stand for your healing. You've got to make a stand. You've got to stand for your healing. And there are times it might be easier to just say, let me just lay down for a few days. I'll be fine. But that's just me. Take it for what it's worth. All right, we looked at Isaiah 53. We looked at Matthew 8, 17. Let's go over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, 1 Peter 2. Oh, silly me. I clicked on the wrong thing. 1 Peter 2, 24. There it is. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That sounds familiar from what we've been reading from Isaiah and Matthew. That we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Well, now here's what's interesting. Isaiah, it says, by whose stripes ye are healed. Peter says, by whose stripes ye were healed. There's a tense difference there. And the tense difference is very important. Because Isaiah, when he was prophesying, was looking forward to something. By whose stripes, by Jesus' stripes, which is to come will be healed, we are healed. But Peter is looking back at an established fact by whose stripes we were healed. So it's already been accomplished. We already are the healed. And getting revelation of that is a key thing. A lot of Christians say they believe in healing, but don't believe that they were healed. Brother Hagin talks about how hard it was for him, in some cases, to get across to people, you were healed. And he mentions that one particular instance, I think it was, if I'm remembering correctly, it was a lady in a wheelchair. And he took the Bible and opened it up and laid it in her lap. And said, read that verse of Scripture. Who is on self, bear sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, she live under righteous, by whose stripes she were healed. And she said, were healed. Were healed? Were healed. 
Well, if I were healed, that means I am the healed. So I don't have to, I don't have to get healed. If I were healed, then I am healed. And Brother Hagin said, yeah, that's what I wanted you to see. You see it? She said, I see it. I'm healed. And so she just raised her arms, started praising the Lord. Father, I just thank you that I'm healed. I thank you that I can walk. She started making a confession of faith. Now, her circumstances in the natural had not changed. She was still sitting in the wheelchair. She still had the Bible on her lap. But she had her arms up and said, oh, Father, I thank you that I'm healed. She finally saw it. And the next thing you know, she took the Bible, laid it aside, got up out of the wheelchair, walked off. Well, you know, to prove the puddings didn't eat. <laughs> she got a manifestation. But the great thing is, before the manifestation, she knew she was the healed. She knew she were, <laughs> I know the English is incorrect, but you get the point. She were healed. If she were, then she is. That means she's healed. Well, same thing with us. <clears throat> We've got to see that we are the healed. Satan may come and try to put symptoms on you. Now, I remember a situation in my case when I was going to college. And I've told the story a few times, but I, I went to college and uh, it's my own business. I was, boy, I was, I was Mr. Faith Man. I had a big cassette player on my belt and I had a wire run up and an earphone and I'd go to classes listening to Brother Copeland and listen to Brother Hagin preach the word. I was, I was full out, you know. And I had a radio program even at that time. And so I got excited because Kenneth Copeland was coming to Greensboro. And so I'm telling everybody on the radio, oh, come see Brother Copeland in Greensboro. He'll be here and I'll see you there. Well, a long week or so, I guess a week and a half or so before that, I had a person who came up to me and, you know, they were admiring the great uh, faith man. And my Baptist tradition was still in there to a certain extent. And they said, oh, Brother Bill, oh, why, you could just never get sick. You're such a big time faith man. Well, you know, I was trying to be humble. I'd been taught to be humble. And so I said, oh, now, come on, I could get sick like anybody else. That became, and it came up out of my spirit because it's down in there from Baptist days. <coughs> and so I said I could get sick like anybody else. Well, as soon as that came out, the devil jumped on me. And he, he kind of hid that I said that from me. So I didn't even know I said it. I said it in passing, if you will, and I just didn't think about it. Well, the next thing I know, I've got a fever, 104 degree fever. I'm getting weak. Now, my mom, bless her heart, she didn't believe in divine healing like, like I did. And she was always kind of looking at me and checking, you know. Well, I'd, I'd been living in divine health for a year or so. I didn't have any sickness or disease. Didn't even have a head cold. So she didn't have a whole lot to look for. But I came in that night, and I just wanted to go upstairs to my bedroom. And I drug myself up the stairs. And she came up, laid her hand on my forehead, and said, Oh, my goodness, you're sick. And I'm laying there going, I'm healed of the Lord. <laughs> it felt miserable. So it got worse, and it got worse. Fever kept going up. It was already pretty high. And then welts broke out all over my skin. Big old red, nasty-looking welts. On my forehead, my face, and my arms, and just my chest all over me. So Bob said, I'm taking you to the hospital. So dad and mom packed me up in the car. You know, here I am, college-age kid. They take me to the hospital, put me in the hospital. And I'm laying there, miserable. And the doctors would come in, and they'd poke, prod, take blood, do all kinds of things. But they didn't really know what was wrong with me, so they didn't want to give me anything. So I didn't get any good drugs. <laughs> you know, I'm just laying there being miserable. And I thought, you know, I could have been miserable at home. <laughs> but anyway... So I'm laying there, and uh, these big old nasty welts. And I'm laying there going, Lord, I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm healed, I'm healed. Oh, Lord, I'm healed. And it just wasn't, I wasn't connected. Something was wrong. And so that was the week Brother Copeland was supposed to be in town. He's supposed to be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday came and went, and I'm still in the hospital. 
and now I'm miserable. I would see Brother Copeland. I wouldn't be there. Oh, I've told all these people to be there, and then I'll see them there, and I'm not there. And I, I just feel oh, I was miserable. And so a brother came after the meetings with the tapes of the meeting. And the message that Brother Copa was preaching on is faith and patience. Patience meaning consistency. And so you've got to get in faith, and you've got to be consistent with your confession. So I put the tapes on, and I've listed the tapes. And before I put the tapes on, I had soap operas running on the TV. Because there wasn't anything to do in there. And so I had the TV on. I don't, I don't even watch soap operas, but they were just on. It's that time of day, you know. So I flipped them off, and I put the tapes on, and I'm listening. One of the first things Brother Copa said, and if you ever do end up in the hospital, bless God, don't watch those stupid soap operas. Let them fill you with doubt and unbelief. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, it's like he was there. So... I began to see that I, somewhere I had not been consistent. So I prayed and I said, Lord, show me what I said, what I did. What, just show me where I got off. And I saw like a little mini movie of me saying to this person, well, I could get sick like anybody else. And I went, oh. it just shocked me. And so I said, Lord, I repent of that. You know that whatever is not of faith is sin. So I repented. I repented of unbelief. I said, Father, I receive my healing. I am the healed of the Lord. That's my confession. Well, very quickly, within hours, the welts started leaving. Now, the funny thing was, it was like they were flowing out of me. They were on my arm, and then they were down on my hand, and then they were on my fingers, and it was like they just flowed out of me. And my fever came down. Well, you know, praise the Lord. I got my manifestation. I am healed. Now I got to deal with my doctor. Because <laughs> my doctor had me in the hospital and he's poking and prodding. He didn't even know what it was. And he said the best uh, theory they had was that my inner layer of skin was allergic to my outer layer of skin. And I thought to myself, I can imagine the cure. This doesn't sound good. <laughs> I thought they're going to try to skin me. So by now, symptoms are gone. So I told the doctor, I said, well, I'm well. I got exams. I got to go to a college. So let me out of here. <coughs> he said, no, we're not going to let you out of here. We got people that are still here that still have this. We don't know why you, you know, are well and they're not. I said, well, I can tell you. It's because I'm healed. Uh, yeah, right. So they believe that. I thought, well, they don't believe that. What am I going to do? So I said, is there any way I can get out? And he said, well, you'll just have to sign yourself out. I said, give me a pen. He said, he said if you do that, I'll never be your doctor again. I said, that's fine. <laughs> you know, you did help me a whole lot this time, you know. So I signed myself out. I left. And, uh, you know, the, the big faith man story is, and it never came back. But it did. I was... A couple weeks later, I'm driving to school because I lived out at the lake and I'm driving to UNCG. I'm driving to school. I look up the rearview mirror. There's a welt. Oh, before it, I just pointed to it and said, no, you don't. Just kept driving. Next time I look, it was gone. And that happened over a few weeks. And then finally, never did happen again. Well, Dr. Bill, what was it? I have no idea. Just the devil. Don't really care. But the point is, you got to know you're the healed. While I'm laying there, there's no time to say, while I'm laying in the hospital, no time to say, well, now, you know, I just don't know if, if, if I'm the healed of the Lord that I should be up and about. No, you've got to stand for the Word of God. And you've got to find out where you missed it in some cases, like I did in this case. I need to get straight, confess some things, get them out. That was just me in my case, not every case. Don't try to make some kind of rule out of that. It was just where I was. But praise the Lord, I've seen this time and time again. God is the healer. God wants us well. Matter of fact, we go back to 3 John verse 2 and look at it this way. Beloved, I will that you prosper and be in health. Can't get any stronger than that. He desires that we're prosperous and in health. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Get anything out of this tonight? Glory to God. Well, let's pray and it will be dismissed. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we've had to come together to receive from your word. I thank you, Father, for your healing power at work in every believer here tonight because we are the healed. Jesus bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases, and by his stripes we were healed. Since we were, then we are. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.